Huo Huo will petrify the souls of your enemies, and today I'm going to tell you how to build her best. My name is Juice and let's get into it. So what relics does our perpetually afraid little creature require in order to shine? None other than 4-piece hackerspace. Considering that Huo Huo's best in slot team comp is DOT, speed is very appreciated there, especially since characters like Black Swan have very hefty speed requirements of 155. And even when you aren't playing in DOT, speed is just a highly contested stat in general. Plus, the 2-piece increasing Huo Huo's own speed is nice. You can also consider 4-piece Passerby, since it increases Huo Huo's healing effects with his 2-piece, and the 4-piece is very neat for heavy skill point setups. Huo Huo herself is already quite the skill point sinker at S0, so this set ends up being food for SP intensive battle setups like Half Swankaron. It's also pretty nice if you're able to clear in one cycle of said teams, because you only gain the extra skill point once at the start of battle. This is also the biggest flaw of this set, which is why I honestly far prefer 4-piece hackerspace, but the scenarios mentioned are valid use cases for the 4-piece. It's also relevant if you're trying to set up a team with E0 S0 Bronya. As for 2-piece mix and match sets, look no further than 2-piece HP%, percent, speed%, percent, and healing%. Percent. Then for her 2-piece string and orb, I'm gonna open up with 2-piece Fleet of the Ageless, because while it may not be my personal favorite Ho Ho choice, which I'll touch on in a moment, it is definitely her most universal and will work across every team in the game, which is very good, since Ho Ho herself is highly flexible by nature due to being a healer, attack percent for all. Not to mention the additional HP percent it gives Ho Ho, making it easier for you to stack a ton of HP on her. If you are not playing in a Black Swan team, this will be your best in slot. But if you are playing in one, then 2-piece Pentacony is where it's at, my friend. Crit doesn't matter in a DOT team, so kill is useless, and while Fleet's attack is very good, since Black Swan does so much of your team's damage, the 10% damage bonus to your win damage is undeniably your best bet for DOT teams. If you don't believe me, here's a percentage comparison of Black Swan's damage if Hoho holds 2-piece Pentacony, Fleet, and Kiel. Do note that this gap closes in more of the worse that your Black Swan's build and damage are, not to mention the tiny 5% extra ERR, which can help Hoho avoid generating energy overflow, since she'll give herself about 10 extra energy on average. 2-piece Broken Keel will be your best bet for all crit-based teams that you want to put Huo in. The crit damage provision is excellent, and building all that effect rise on Huo is gonna make for one beefy healer that can tank a lot of disasters coming her way. Main step priority is simple, go for healing percent, speed, HP percent, ERR percent. You can use an HP percent body as substitute if you don't have a healing bonus body piece yet, and the same goes for the link rope if you don't have an ERR piece to use yet. Though ERR will be better, because firing off more Ho-Ho ultimates means more ultimates for your team in general, and more ultimate on her team-wide attack percent buff. I don't recommend choosing HP percent boots over speed, you want to be able to get around to Ho-Ho sooner rather than later in case of you needing an emergency heal, and it also doesn't really do much to extend the duration of her talent field the way you might think it would. Also, don't bother building damage bonus percent on her, she does zero damage. In terms of stack goals, honestly I went over this in my Fushuen guide and I'll run over it again now. You really don't have to stress about stat breakpoints on a character like this. Sure, more is better, but whatever you get from putting Ho Ho on an HP orb and healing or HP body will be more than enough. For those who are not totally convinced, here's a comparison between Ho Ho's total healing on 3k HP, 4k HP, and 5k HP. See? Not that big of a deal. Speed-wise, just going for 134 will be fine, but if you want to aim for 143 and 160 for some extra actions per cycle, then be my guest. Personally, I'd stick to 4-piece hackerspace in all scenarios if I were you, and while I vastly prefer 2-piece Pentacony over Fleet, I don't want to undersell the versatility and effectiveness of it. So to save yourself from farming two separate sets if you don't feel like it, go for Fleet, but if you want to min-max your Black Swan's performance, go for 2-piece Pentacony. I found that I cleared a whole cycle faster when using 2-piece Pentacony, however, and my Black Swan is E1-S1, so the higher investment your Black Swan is, the better 2-piece Pentacony becomes. I'd rather pick Fleet if you're running an E0-S0 Black Swan, however. In order to ward off evil spirits, you need the right weapon on hand, or in this case, a little glass box with a picture inside. As always, since this is a rerun video, I'm going to evaluate the new Abundance Light Cones that have came out on Pentacony and evaluate their power for Ho Ho, and then we'll get onto her original mainstays. And what do you know, the only new Abundance Cone since then has been what is real. The break effect does nothing for Ho Ho's kit, and the self heal is okay. It is free at least, but honestly, there are not many incentives as to why you should use this. Her mainstays are still as sumptuous as ever, however. Knight of Fright is obviously Ho-Ho's best in slot. 
The extra ERR is very nice for her, since as we all know, more hoo -hoo bursts is a delicious thing, and the additional healing is pretty neat. Also, there's an attack buff which can stack up to 5 times, and if we assume S1, the buff when maxed out can give a party member a tidy 12% attack. Good light cone, but honestly for a signature light cone it feels a bit expensive for what it gives you in return. What puts me off of this light cone is that it has no skill point regenerating effects, kind of like Bronya's light cone. Also, those little paper things down there seem to be the cutting edge of fashion. Bylo's signature is also pretty solid since it loads up your whole hole of plenty of stats. Well worth your time, your healing will definitely see an uptick with this light cone, yet I feel like some of the upcoming 4 star light cones that I'm about to discuss are going to be more effective in this because of their energy effects. Speaking of which, Quid Pro Quo is a very good choice for her, especially at S5. The extra energy is extremely appreciated by her entire team, and it's on the whole a nice way to expand the amount of utility that your whole hole has, as if she didn't already have plenty of that. Shared feeling is also really strong because of it giving everyone energy upon skill usage. Hu Hu is definitely quite the skill point vacuum at E0, so you'll be triggering its passive quite a lot, not to mention the lovely outgoing healing boost. Great 4 star light cone. Post stop conversation is also extremely nice because it gives Ho Ho herself some really nice energy on top of the outgoing healing bonus, and if there's one thing Ho Ho loves to eat up, it's ERR. Perfect timing will make your Ho Ho really tanky, but because she already helps your team resist crowd control debuffs and has a cleanse on her skill, I don't value this light cone on her as much as the others I've already talked about. Hey, over here is an event light cone that once again doesn't really provide any energy utility, so while it is good for her and will work well, I'd rather just go for quid pro quo since it's also free. I have the same opinion on Warmth Shortened's Cold Nights, but this is even worse since this option is paid. Echoes of the Coffin is interesting, since while the attack percent is totally useless, every time Ho Ho basic attacks, she will restore energy, and after using her ult, everyone gains a flat 12 speed for one turn assuming S1. So, while you might think this Lycom looks bad on the surface if you only look at the attack percent boost, you'd actually be wrong since the second half of the weapon passive isn't too shabby at all. Still don't pull this deliberately for her though. Cornucopia only has healing properties, but it will work fine if you're new, Fine Fruit is the 3-star cone I'd go for thanks to its energy properties, and Multiplication doesn't really have any specific uses on Ho-Ho. If I were you, just pick Quid Pro Quo, it's free in the MOC store. Teams, 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 I'm immediately opening this up with DOT. The attack percent she gives the others from her burst is excellent, since attack percent is basically the crit of DOT if that makes sense. Plus, the extra energy she provides is really important, since more Kafka burst detonations equals more DPS on the whole, and this entire archetype has a ravenous need for speed, so 4-piece hacker space will feel right at home here. Plus, if Black Swan's involved, I've already glazed how great 2-piece Pentacony is for a higher investment Black Swan. She can be used in Calf Swan Quran as well, but I don't recommend it for an easy or whole hole that can't 1 or 2 cycle with this team wearing 4-piece passerby. If you can't manage that, then you won't eat one whole hole. This is because you always want to skill on Kafka for her own DOT detonations, so then you either have to basic attack on Black Swan, which while that's fine in complete single target, you'll miss out on AoE Arcana application if there's more than one target, which gimps Black Swan quite a bit, and fewer Acheron skills equals fewer Acheron alts. I will save it since my own Huhu is E1, this team works well in my experience and has the main function of freeing up Rua Mei for your other team half, especially need if you're using Firefly on the other side. And if you can't manage your skill points well enough, then Lorcha ends up being on par of Huhu clears, despite having so much less utility. So be aware of this. DOT is Huhu's main specialty team, in my opinion. Outside of DOT, you can pretty much use Huhu wherever you feel like, as she's a healer with very universal buffing capabilities after all. Every DPS is still attack scaling in Honkai Star Rail. We haven't reached a point of DPSs that scale on HP%, percent, def%, percent, or the like yet, so quite literally run her wherever else you like. I've heard that the subscribe button team is pretty good. In any case, let's run over how she does in other comps. She'll do just fine in hyper carry teams, and broken kills a nice 2 piece she can hold for them. It doesn't really matter which carry you run with her, just pick one, give them their usual supports, and go ham. Be wary of skill point usage, however. Somebody like Blade or Jing Liu is gonna have a much easier time handling an easier ho ho in their team than a Dylan. Speaking of Daniel, for those interested, bringing a Sparkle along should really help alleviate skill point issues for both parties, though Ho Ho might still suck up quite a bit. If your second support paired with Sparkle is also skill point positive, however, then you should be fine. Other than that, Ho Ho will more than likely satisfy any hyper carry needs. Also, note that for hyper carry Acheron, she's obviously not going to provide her burst to stack when Ho Ho uses her own burst, because regular ultimate energy has no effect on Balls and Mori over here, and Ho Ho doesn't apply any debuffs, so she can't help your Acheron team build up with stacks more quickly. For follow-up attack teams, you should just be using Adventurine, he's way better, but if you don't have Adventurine and want to know if Ho Ho is still a good alternative option, yeah, she'll work fine since her buffing is universal and energy is a good thing to have, no matter the team comp, but it's not like Ho Ho provides anything specific to follow-up attacks as an archetype. Super Break teams also don't gain anything specific from Ho Ho either. Perhaps Firefly getting her ult back faster, but that's not really something she struggles with in the first place. 
I'd urge you to just use Gallagher instead. My Gallagher is E1, and he feels really good to use in Super Break. I'm also hearing a lot of talk on how Ling Sha is gonna replace Woho, but I disagree for the very reason that Woho is DOT centric. She's more likely to replace Gallagher in your Firefly teams. In any case, I'd just stick to DOT if I were you, since it's easily Woho's most effective use case. Now for traces. How does one afraid of all things incorporeal manage to subdue ghastly spirits? Let's find out about that right now. Woohoo's basics are very basic indeed, just a little bit of HP scaling wind damage, at least it scales on the stat that she actually builds for some negligible extra damage. Ah yes, now we're talking, Woohoo's skill. She'll cleanse your teammates and then heals your primary target by a large amount of HP, and heals the two next to your primary target by a few percentages less. Still really good team wide healing, she also gains two stacks when casting her skill at E0. Her talent is what those stacks are for. Her talent makes it so that every time an ally does anything, basic, skill, alt, whatever, they will heal, and every time an ally's turn starts and they get healed, their debuff gets cleansed. This can happen up to six times, and if you use her skill again, the trigger count is reset. This talent is what makes Woho such godly bleach, since she can quite literally cleanse your whole party constantly. The duration works the same as Wa Mei skill, every time Woho herself moves, one stack gets eaten up. Her ult is very good, she gives energy back to all your teammates depending on trace level, and will also slap a hefty amount of attack percent onto them. My guy, this is a DOT team's dream. Her technique will scare enemies to death, and in the overworld they will run away from Ho Ho, but if you can catch up to them and hit them, there is a 100% base chance for all of the enemies to have their attack reduced by 25% for two turns. In MOC, it's even better since the enemies can't run away from you. That in of itself sounds terrifying. For them. Now for Ascension passives, her A1 will help everyone resist crowd control debuffs by 35% more, neat. Her A2 gives Woho one stack when battle starts, cool. And her A6 will give Woho one point of energy every time her talent gets triggered once. Trace priorities are simple. To be honest, part of me wants to say that all these traces are equal. Please don't sleep on any of them, and obviously level up the healer's main source of healing. After all, you pulled the healer for a specific reason. To be silly. Jokes aside, with that being said, her ultimate is so damn high value in DOT teams, which are ho -Ho's best in slot to the point where I consider maxing it out, to be just as important as leveling her skill, aka her main source of emergency healing. If you're wondering which Ho-Ho tries to max out to 10, then ultimate wins because her healing abilities at level 8 should be more than enough to keep you alive and well during battles. ho, -Ho has a lot of therapy to pay for, so let's talk Eidolons. My god, this is easily one of the most underrated E1s in all of Star Rail, because this turns her from being a Lorcha side grade in DOT, due to skill point problems, into being the strict best in slot option for DOT compared to any other sustainer by a landslide. Having to use a skill point once every three turns, as opposed to every two, is unironically incredible. I'm not overstating when I say that the jump from E0 to E1 is like a jump from C0 to C1 for Hu Tao and Genshin. And for those who don't get that, think of it like the difference between a Raichu and a Zapdos. This is situational, honestly. If you're dying with an E1 Huo Huo in the first place, then you have other problems to sort out before considering the C2. I'm mostly eyeing up that delicious plus 3 to the alt, but with that being said, no need to chase it. Once again, if you feel like you need this, then you have other problems, my guy. Obviously don't pick this up unless you're on the way to E6. Ah yes, plus two basics. Gotta love it. This is a very good supportive ability, but my god, please don't get it unless you're literally the kind of whale who E6s everyone. Pulling for a supportive E6 feels so disappointing if you don't have a DPS E6 to pair it with. Either way, good for what it was made to be, but I don't recommend this whatsoever as your first E6. Listen, before you comment, like Cone or E1. E1, E1, E1. I said it three times so that you could be hypnotized into wanting E1 over S1. E1 is a world of convenience that makes this character feel infinitely more playable in way more team comps, and the speed buffing on top is unfathomably good for DOT teams. Her E1 makes her Gallagher level for DOT teams, which is why I'm promoting it so hard. Get it first over S1, any day. If you're a fellow DOT main such as myself, then you know how hard Ho Ho cooks. Honestly, I do think that Gallagher and Aventurine will cover for all your sustaining needs, but if you like DOT teams specifically and you don't already have a Lorcha, then Ho Ho is an excellent pickup. She also runs ahead of Lorcha by kilometers once you get that E1 of hers. I'm not gonna stop glazing that E1, man. I find it to be seriously underappreciated considering the quality of life it provides. I love this character dearly, definitely nothing to do with their relatability, folks, and she will more than certainly meet your expectations as long as you're aware of her general pros and cons, which I've already made a video on if you need any assistance with figuring them out. 
Make sure to follow my Twitter and join my Discord, which will be down below in the pinned comment and description of this video. You can also see my Ko-Fi in those areas, and consider joining my new channel memberships if you want access to some cool emotes. More perks are coming soon. Other than that, follow my Twitch where I stream sometimes over at twitch.tv forward slash juicechanyt if you want to catch me live. Hopefully this video is able to tell you how to get your whole well, well, banishing enemies to the spirit realm. This has been Juice, signing out, and honestly, who's the kind of wimp to jump up when her toast finishes?